The Center for Audit Quality presents Profession in Focus. Hello, and welcome to this edition of Profession in Focus. I'm Cindy Fernelli, the Executive Director of the Center for Audit Quality, and I'm very pleased to have as our guest today, Frank Casal. Frank is the Vice Chair of Audit at KPMG, and you oversee the entire firm's audit practice. So it's fantastic to have you here, and so thank you. Good, good, glad to be here, Cindy. So, I want to talk to you first and foremost about the new auditor's reporting model. The PCOB just came out with their new standard. It's going to go in effect um, soon. That's really going to, I think, fundamentally change the auditor's report uh, in a way or update it in a way that hasn't been done for decades maybe. Mm -hmm. So tell me what you think the impact of that new standard will have on uh, the audit. Will it change the way that you do audits at KPMG or will it just change the report? Uh, so the audit itself is going to be uh, unchanged. Uh, I think the audit experience is going to be very different because what the uh, expanded audit report, which is still a few years out, will require is that uh, the auditor is required to bring forth and report on uh, critical audit matters, CAMs, uh, as it's referenced in the uh, standard. And uh, essentially what you're doing uh, is taking the dialogue and the discussion that takes place today in the audit committee meetings and you're putting that into a report. So uh, well-intentioned and, and makes a lot of sense. Uh, the, the challenge will be that you're taking a, a conversation uh, in the audit committee uh, setting and trying to distill that into uh, a written report and uh, that will take some time and effort. But the idea of getting the information uh, to uh, investors or potential investors makes a lot of sense. It really will be the experience. Uh, and I think what will happen is that uh, there will be other uh, senior members of uh, management as well as board members uh, who maybe heretofore haven't had great interest in, in sitting through the audit committee meetings and understanding uh, the dialogue that takes place. Uh, they will now have an interest because that information will find its way into the public domain. Well, and so much of it is about context. You mentioned the conversation, uh, which is a dialogue, and it's hard to capture that in verbiage that goes into a, a public report. So I think um, we're all going to have to find our way, aren't we, on, on how we prepare these reports. The reality is that uh, other countries have gone through it, and uh, those reports out there uh, are, I, I must say, when you get through uh, and, and look at some of these other reports, uh, they are informative. It's more than the two or three paragraph report that we have today. Um, I also want to change gears just a bit and talk about technology. We are seeing a whole slew of innovations coming to market, both in companies, the companies that you audit, as well as the firms as well. So whether it's artificial intelligence or data analytics, use of drones, you hear about maybe even robotics. So tell me a little bit about how technology is changing the audit. Uh, I, I would say, Cindy, it, it's clearly uh, changing the, the audit. Uh, it's, uh, it's a journey, and I would say we're in the uh, early phases of that journey. You end up with uh, more data, and you're in a position where you can uh, identify trends, anomalies, uh, and so forth. So it's clearly the direction to go. But the journey is, is still in the, uh, uh, the early stages. So if you think about where we are now, uh, the, the areas that uh, perhaps are getting the most attention uh, are journal entries where you can get and, and capture all the journal entries that were recorded by the company. You can identify uh, who made those entries, uh, when they were made in terms of proximity to uh, the quarter or year end. Uh, you mentioned DNA, data and analytics. Uh, that gets a lot of your time uh, in terms of uh, uh, what the industry and the firm is doing. Uh, that is uh, uh, clearly something that will uh, evolve over time, uh, but right now it's, it's presenting uh, somewhat of a challenge uh, on a couple of fronts. So if one looks at uh, 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 DNA in, in terms of uh, getting the total population, so what you'll typically hear is that DNA will allow you to look at uh, the entire population. So you can take, uh, ingest uh, somebody's uh, 
uh, trial balance, general ledger, sub ledger, and uh, run it against predetermined criteria to see if there are outliers in that population. So what that would do is it would uh, supplant uh, sampling, uh, which is uh, currently the format that most of the firms use to draw a conclusion on a population. And then if you look at the uh, uh, the granddaddy, if you will, of, of technology, it's cognitive AI, artificial intelligence, and that's uh, machine learning and uh, things of that sort. Uh, all the firms have uh, uh, different uh, uh, use cases uh, in, in works in terms of uh, how that might work. We're no exception. We've got one that's very far along in terms of uh, for the financial services sector in terms of uh, loan grading. So it would, uh, it's a process where uh, Watson would uh, ingest all the information, unstructured data, or all the files from a credit and uh, uh, using criteria and repetitive learning would end up grading the uh, the credit and that would be compared to the uh, the human uh, grader uh, at internally at the company. Uh, that is a ways off because what you have now is it's a quantum leap to go from from dealing with disconfirming or potentially disconfirming evidence to replacing the human judgment process with machine intelligence. Uh, but down the road, that will, uh, I predict, ultimately become uh, a key tool in the toolbox for, for the firms and uh, will put us uh, well on the path to uh, real-time auditing and uh, uh, be in a position where you can uh, uh, ingest the information, uh, access it all the time, and uh, on short notice be able to issue an auditor's opinion. You know, one thing I want to say about that, though, we spend a lot of time both at the CAQ, as does KPMG and the profession in general, on talent development. I don't see that any of these technology advancements will replace the need for humans. I, I agree. Uh, you're absolutely right. Uh, the uh, impact, uh, again, somewhat down the road, but if you take even the basics in, in terms of uh, uh, journal entry testing, cr footing, cross-footing, the, uh, the, the bots, the RPAs that I mentioned, uh, that does take labor out of the equation. So the proverbial pyramid uh, that has existed for many, many years starts to, uh, uh, starts to flatten out a little bit. So, uh, and ever, clearly when you get to uh, cognitive, uh, that would be a, uh, uh, an outgrowth of uh, relying on uh, technology and, and uh, machine learning. It's fascinating. Yeah, yeah. A little scary, but fascinating. It is, yeah. It's the changing <laughs> times. It's happening it is, everywhere. It is. So. We've, got to, we've got to keep up. So one last uh, question for you. I feel I'd be remiss having you here not asking you about cybersecurity. The ICPA just issued a new framework for cybersecurity risk management. And I'm just curious from your vantage point, what are some of the challenges that companies and the CPAs are going to have to face as we all partner together to fight the cybersecurity battle? The CAQ has done a pretty good job of uh, laying out uh, whether it's in or outside of the current framework of an audit. Uh, the shift is taking place, but the auditors are in a position with uh, uh, the, the uh, manner in which they've approached the current responsibility, so they understand uh, general uh, IT controls and uh, things of that nature. Uh, that can and uh, uh, should be, uh, uh, in, certain, in most cases, if you're extending the responsibilities, uh, applicable to the entire platform as opposed to the narrow platform that they're focused on today. So the, the auditors bring the, the skill set in, in terms of being able to do things of that nature. They bring the uh, objectivity and professional skepticism. So there will be a role for them to play. But the important part was what uh, the, the CAQ did in terms of making sure that people understood that it doesn't exist because there's a high percentage of the last survey that I think uh, your group did that uh, they did, deport, uh, did report a uh, uh, cyber breach, cyber occurrence, uh, in a like percentage expected one in the upcoming year. So it, it's out there, it's real, and uh, it's high on uh, the investor's mind in, in terms of where you stand on that. So there will be a role, whether it will be in a test role or uh, uh, providing uh, uh, assistance uh, as companies work through those issues. Uh, Time will tell, but uh, clearly the profession is going to play a role in that. Excellent. So, thank you so much, Frank. It's been really a pleasure talking to you. Cindy, it was all my pleasure. A lot for us to think about. All right. So, Thanks very much. Well, with that, we will close this session of Profession in Focus, and I invite you to join us next time. Thank you. Mm -hmm.